Welcome to the BBTV Network, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. Now, this is episode three in the BBTV trilogy with the managing partner of managing partner of dynamic recruitment firm Normine Lombard. Hello for the final time, Amanda. Hello, Malcolm. Yeah, I got that slightly wrong there, managing part. I, I don't know whether I promoted you or demoted you, but I apologize for, you know. <laughs> I could use a demotion. It's fine. Yeah, I need to make yeah, it would. <laughs> yeah, work you way back up again. Now, Amanda, <laughs> change may be all around us and uncertainty continues without a doubt. Uh, but for my 650 plus BBTV interviews since March 2020, uh, so less than two years, I've heard from leaders who are perplexed and anxious about the future of their company. Now, many are uncertain how they will not only recruit the right talent for the future, but also retain that talent, especially with regards to Generation Z people, who um, recent research has just shown Generation Z have uh, got huge amount of stress, stress problems. Now, I think in many cases, is those leaders have failed to invest in their HR process, what do you think they need to be doing strategically in order to have what, after all, is the engine of the business, the right people? Sure. I think it all comes back down to making their lives easier when they're at work. So much is focused on you know, getting, getting someone in the door and getting them working for you. But I really challenge my clients to step into their shoes, step into this particular employee's shoes for a week. What does that feel like? What stresses are you hitting and what could alleviate it? If it's a high level role, it may be certain software systems or certain data supports or maybe more employees. When we get to wait staff, you know, food service, hospitality, they are on the front lines and mm. are out there working their tushes off at you know, the lower tier of pay. And so what they're really looking for is protection, right? Don't, don't put me on the front lines and in danger. Make sure I have the right equipment and also make sure I have the right support. We need employers to recognize that they are short staffed, right? They feel it, but in a different way than their staff feels it. I've been a waitress before and there is nothing worse than a packed house. Your yeah. cooks are not producing food and you have a million tasks, so I challenge my business owners to say, what can you do to make their life easier? Can you maybe augment your staff with technology? Can you um, add extra staff that are maybe not as skilled, but that can support the others? Um, really just looking at life from your employee's side can make all the difference in the world. You see, I, I like that approach because all too often, I think recruitment companies are too busy um, Oh, how can I put this carefully? Um, kissing the backside of the uh, the customer rather than making the customer do what you're doing. That's think about the job and think about the person that's going to fulfill that jo that job and do it well and be happy. Well, I mean, we guarantee our placements, and the worst thing we can do is wow. paint everything as a beautiful. You know, the grass is greener over here. Come on over. They quit a job. And start working for our client. And they're like, Amanda, you lied to me. So yeah. we work really hard up front to make sure that, you know, we talk to our clients and say, what does the day-to-day -day look like? What are the biggest hurdles? And what are you doing to fix them? And then we are very honest with the candidate and say, this is what you're walking into. Does that give you the warm and fuzzies? Or do you want to turn and run now? Um, and I think that's what people are looking for, right? It is okay to run a rough ship, right? You do not have to have a perfect company. You can have your faults and flaws and you can be understaffed and all of those things, but make sure you tell your candidates that, right? And you make sure that you're doing something for them. If you're asking them to lift you out of that, well, they should share in the bigger reward. And so that's yeah. a lot of what our coaching comes around is, you know, make sure that the reward meets the sacrifice that you're asking for. Yeah, I, I really do like that because um, honesty is something that seems to have, have drifted away uh, as um, as we all become so more commercial and even greedy, you know. But honesty is what builds a business, isn't it? It really is, and 
The biggest thing that I find with my clients, um, especially ones that have been doing this for years, right? I've owned this business for 40 years. We've done it this way and it's always worked. What I tell them is like, well, is it working today? Because it obviously isn't always working. Um, And so we challenge them to also look at technology and how that can not replace your staff, but it can make them better, right? Mm. If you're in a food service environment, there are amazing technologies that can support your staff so they don't have to keep walking to tables. There's ways to prevent your hospitality staff from being in the most you know, dangerous situations in close contact. We really urge our clients to, you know, even if you're not digital and maybe you're old school, if you will, step out of your comfort zone because you're not trying to employ yourself. You're trying to mm. employ a, people with a very different outlook. And, you know, Gen Zers especially, they are already their own little augmented robots, right? We all walk around as cyborgs with our cell phones attached to us. They are very comfortable working side by side with tech. So just because a business owner isn't, doesn't mean that their employees are, you know, are going to feel the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Talking about hospitality, you know, I've trained many general managers in my 40 odd years in hospitality. And um, I always say to them, you've got to help your your people see the value of what they're doing. For example, uh, you know, I could interview, so we say the dishwasher, some dishwasher and say, well, I'm just the dishwasher. No, you're not. You know, if if no, dirty cutlery or dirty dishes go out there, then the reputation of the re- restaurant is ruined. And I, I think sometimes um, leaders have forgotten to um, talk to people about the value that they're bringing to the business. Do you agree? Oh, 100 percent agree. And not only do leaders not communicate it, I don't think leaders always recognize it in a yeah. way that they can communicate it. And the bigger your organization grows, the more important it is for you to take a week from behind your desk and get in the trenches. You need to go yeah. out with the employees that make your business run. And it's you may not love it, but I know within my company, we have multiple locations and multiple employees. I would step in and do any one of their jobs. Do I want a cold call? No. Will I? Absolutely. That's yeah. the mentality that you need to have as a, you know, as an owner, be like, just because you don't want to do it doesn't mean that you don't have to, to get a feel for what your employees experience. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Amanda. Now let's give viewers and listeners details of your URL, which obviously viewers, you can see on the screen behind me, but for listeners, it's all the W's, all the W's, nor mine, N-O-R-M-I-N-E, nor mine, hyphen Lombard, L-O-M-B-A-R-D, nor mine, Lombard, hyphen Lombard, dot com. Now, for the final time, I'll tell you to go there and see the difference I've been talking about. And again, I'll let you work it out for yourself. But, you know, just think about it compared to other recruitment companies that you've uh, encountered. And I'll, it'll, it'll drop on you that the, uh, the difference and the important difference. Now, I started this trilogy by saying that I felt that no other time in my memory has the recruitment process been more important. Businesses are generally not finding cues of people wanting to fill their vacancies. But I trust this trilogy with Amanda Normine has helped move your thinking in the right direction for the moment, the changes that are necessary. So thanks, Amanda, for being a great guest. Thank you so much, Malcolm.